inside one of the demonstrations that have filled Cairo streets since the revolution two years ago, scores of men are ripping off the clothes of a solitary woman and sexually assaulting her. This attack on a foreign woman was caught on camera. But we've discovered that every Egyptian woman is at risk. Women were at the forefront of the revolution that brought democracy. I wanted to know why women are being treated like this now. I went to meet a woman who had survived such an attack. Nihal Zaklul told me she'd been at a protest in Tahrir Square with a friend. I started out with a circle around us of five, and then it just increased of pushing, and then suddenly someone grabbed me. Grabbed you where? Uh, my butt, basically. What, there's a crowd of men and they're all trying to grab at you? Yeah, and, and pulling my veil and pulling my... Uh, trying clothes. to strip your clothes off? Yeah. Nihal escaped, but her friend did not. Her uh, clothes were completely torn on the... and she was on the floor crying. How they, many men? She said that there were about 50, all ages. Uh, she said that they stripped her clothes naked. They, they had fingers everywhere. They pulled her from the hair. They pinned her down on the floor. And they finger raped her, basically. Nihal's friend sustained internal injuries and couldn't walk for a week. She since fled Egypt. Nihal, too, was severely traumatized. For the first week, I was crying myself to sleep every night. But seriously, I can never forget her face. I can never forget how she looked like. I like cause that's like an image that those men have created for me, and I'm always going to be remembering it. The attack changed Nihal's life. She now dedicates as much time as she can to stopping this happening to other women. We're meeting Nihal in the offices of Harassmap. It's an anti-sexual harassment movement that started to collect reports of sexual assaults and harassment. Now, we're coming here in the evening because nearly all their volunteers are unpaid and they've got day jobs. Kind of scattered around situation that was Harass Map allows women to log all forms of sexual harassment, and that included the experiences of many in the room. Do you find that most of the people that come to join this movement have been so sexually harassed? Most people in Egypt have been sexually harassed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So was that the motivating factor for you? Yes and no. Like it's a, it's a started as yes because on that day that I was harassed, I couldn't punish whoever did this to me. And also because I have sisters, and I have a mother, and I have friends, uh, female friends. Why do they have to go through the same um, shit, basically, that I'm going through? In the last two years, the team has received over 900 reports from women across the country. Leila El Rafai is collating the statistics. So that's the map of Egypt. Right. Right. That big dot right here mm -hmm. is Cairo, Greater Cairo. Okay. And then you see we have reports from all over Egypt. Women are reporting groping. Somebody reported rape. Now, what's the most interesting thing that this data is telling you? This data tells us that it's everywhere. And it does exist. And you can't run from it. The women believe only a fraction of cases are reported. I need to tell their parents that a lot of people would be shy to like tell their father. Yeah, you know, like, so this is almost like a taboo subject, even though it's happening to everybody. Yeah, they might get in trouble, depending on the family and like the mm -hmm. guy's mentality, you know, the yeah. father's mentality. So it's upsetting. But Erasmus is making it much better. Oh. <laughs> Erasmus is a vital source of information on attacks because few women go to the authorities. 
I met with a 21-year-old student, Dina Rashed, who's been the victim of several assaults. I was taking the subway uh, to downtown. I found someone tells me, you're a whore, and he, then he touched me. He touched your body, he touched yeah, your breast. Touch uh, my whole body, the whole body. Dina managed to alert a nearby police officer, but he refused to help. He said to me, it's not his fault, it's your fault, because you are dressing like that. You are dressing too tight. Um, you are wearing makeup, and you don't have the right to do that. Um, your hair is not covered, so we put all the blame on me. If you were attacked again, would you go to the police? No. Because, just like I said, I lost all hope about the policemen and the state of law. Only two men have ever been prosecuted under sexual harassment laws. As we drank our tea, I realized a woman was being assaulted by a group of teenagers. Just like you saw now, this is the kind of... In what are they saying? Well, they're catcalling. I was beginning to look at Cairo streets with new eyes. Minutes later, while we were still sitting at the cafe, I saw two frightened girls being chased by another group of teenage boys. Follow them, quick, it's a pack of guys. I think it's harassment. It's harassment. Yeah. Boys Sammy, ran away you, after Sammy, her. You, they're running after her. How many groups of boys have we seen? We've seen uh, three. Three yeah. big groups of boys, and you can see nobody even has battered an eyelid. Nobody's done anything. As Dina and I walked to the metro, she told me what men were saying to us. She's looking at you with a falsy look. Disgusting. Yes, disgusting. 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 Someone said to me, blonde hair. In our country, colored hair, yeah. and she's a prostitute. Right, okay. In the space of a few hundred yards, we were called whores over a dozen times. I feel exhausted. Oh, me too. <laughs> really, I haven't experienced anything quite like this, where it's every, nearly every single man we walked past just looked at us in a really intimidating, sexually aggressive way, and it's really dehumanizing. I feel filled with rage at the moment, and it's one of the few times, I think it's the only time in my life where I've been really happy not to understand the local language. We met up with Nihal again at a demonstration against sexual harassment outside the presidential palace. I reckon there must be at least a couple of hundred people here now. You can also see there are loads of cameras Lots of the media, the press is here, because sexual harassment has become such a hot topic in Egypt at the moment. The revolution has allowed the Egyptian media to raise the issue of sexual harassment, which was rarely mentioned in public before. The recently elected Muslim Brotherhood have said they'll investigate the problem. They also have their own clear line on the subject. They emphasize a woman's place is at home, not on the streets. They encourage women to cover up as much as possible. I was learning that many men blame women for being harassed. We're overhearing a conversation at the moment. It's a guy who's come to say that women should watch what they wear and it's the fault of women that they're being sexually harassed.
Yet the more women I talked to, the more they told me that dress has little to do with being a target. The group that had organized the protest took me to a meeting they were holding in Stavolanta, one of the poorest neighborhoods in Cairo. No men were allowed in the room, as women from two very different worlds shared very similar stories. One woman passed on a good trick to fend off harassers. Since we've got here, I've really wanted to talk to men who harass women. Unsurprisingly, no one so far has been willing to admit this on camera, but we've met a group of friends who said they will be filmed and they've agreed to talk about it. A local journalist had put me in touch with three men from his conservative neighborhood on the outskirts of Cairo. Mahmoud, Mohammed and Khaled are in their early 20s. They're unmarried, have steady jobs, and work in the evenings as DJs for weddings. How far does it go? Girls with hijabs are also being assaulted. Why do you think that is? I want you to be honest with me. So, what about the way I'm dressed? I'm going to stand up so you can see. Would I be to blame if I got groped or assaulted by a big mob like this? Even though the three friends have jobs, like most young men in their neighborhood, they can't afford to get married. شاب مش شغال وعارف ان طبعا ان هو عمره ما هيتجوز ولسه قدامه فتره كبيره قوي اللي هو هيتجوز فاكيد يعني اللي هو مثلا ممكن يتحرش ببنت او كده فبيقول يجيبها بالغصب احسن ما ما هو مش كده كده مش هيعمل حاجه. The shocking thing about that conversation is that they're all really polite and educated young men but they have absolutely no sense of responsibility. As far as they're concerned, these women are to blame entirely for their behavior. Yet I couldn't understand how these views, as unpleasant as I found them, could escalate into mob attacks. 
Wael Abbas is a leading journalist. He's regularly sent mobile phone footage of attacks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They've cl ripped off her clothes. So upsetting. Wow. I mean, it's, it's like a pack of wild dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ripping apart a piece of meat. I mean, that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's a jungle where there's no presence of law or justice or police or any regulations. It's like that. According to Wael, mob attacks can be traced back to 2005 in the time of the old Mubarak regime. He said while male protesters were beaten up, female dissidents got a different treatment. And what Mubarak did was not use security, but he used criminals, he used thugs that targeted women and assaulted them sexually. Back so you then, it was, were you witness this? I was witness, I've seen it. Sexual harassment was used as a weapon, as a tool against these women protesters. Do you think that this has had an influence over what's happening now? Maybe, maybe. It, it, was, it was a start. And it, 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 I think it, 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 it encourages people to, to do similar stuff because it's very common uh, that when people get away with their crime, others will, will pursue the same approach. Even though Mubarak's regime is gone, the sex mob attacks around Tahrir Square on female protesters seem to be increasing. I wanted to speak to men who had taken part in such attacks. I think I finally got a lead. One of our contacts says he knows men in his neighborhood who he says are involved. Many poor parts of Cairo are controlled by gangs, and it's here where men are recruited for mobs. We met a gangster who allowed us into his area to meet some of them. We're in the old city, it's in the south of Cairo, and it's a religious, traditional area. Now, we've been told we've got very limited time here because the locals are very suspicious of foreigners. We're going to stop filming in a minute. We're going to be taken somewhere secluded to meet a man that our contact says has been paid to sexually assault women. <laughs> And what are you told to do exactly? Are you still being paid to sexually harass women? Who's paying you to sexually assault women? Another man explained he was often hired to attack women as part of a gang of 65. He got paid between 10 and 20 pounds a time. Who's paying you? <laughs> Who do you think is paying you now? The people in the area were scared of these men, and I was glad to leave. They wouldn't reveal their new paymasters. Some victims are sure Islamists are now behind the attacks. That Friday, veteran activist Afaf El Sayed was assaulted in Tahrir Square. Her arm was still in a sling. <laughs> اللي هو يعني هو حاول ي ي ي يتحرش بيا بيمسكني من صدري اللي شد وروح اديت له اديت له كده بإيدي. أفاف who are these thugs? Who are these men who are carrying out these sexual assaults? 
كان مجموعة من ستة من الإخوان المسلمين العقاب اللي بيحاولوا يعملوه هو التحرش الجنسي بالستات وخاصة الناشطات علشان يبعدوا عن الميدان أو يخافوا من الميدان فبالتالي في تحرش موجه سواء من القوى الدينية علشان يرهبونا فنرجع البيت سواء من الفلول كمان عشان يرهبونا علشان نسكت وما نتكلمش Afaf is not alone in accusing the Muslim Brotherhood of orchestrated attacks on women that day. The Muslim Brotherhood made an official statement. It accepted that thugs did attack protesters, but said they were imposters wearing their party t-shirts, and that genuine Muslim Brotherhood activists were also targeted. It seems to me that the revolution gave so many women here a voice, but with these freedoms have come threats. It takes huge courage for women to continue to protest when there's such a high risk of falling victim to sexual violence. The reasons behind sexual harassment and assault in Egypt are complex, but what's clear is society's attitude to women is at the heart of it, and this has allowed political groups to use it as a tool of intimidation. Hello. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Fine, how are you? Nihal fears the threats to women are having the intended effect. So women are now scared of going to Tahrir Square? What happened to me on Tahrir, me and my friends, they completely destroyed this symbol for me. Like, for me to go there always brings out these memories and I hate to go there. Do you think that makes a difference to the movement? Of course, it does. How? It's, uh, because if, if they're starting to segregate women from protests, they're starting to segregate women from the revolution. And how does it make you feel to think that all the men that did this to you are still out there? That's the reason I'm fighting, because they're still out there. And I don't know if they're doing it to somebody else that I don't know about. So the fact that they're out there motivates me that, you know what, someday I'll get you for what you did to us. Women like Nihal will resist any attempt to silence them. But as more women are scared away from protests, they may be harder to hear. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.